What's up, chat? What's up, YouTube? What's up to everybody out there that's listening? SoundCloud, what's up to you guys? Hit the like button. Comment. This is week... Well, no, it's not week. This is episode 59. 59. Big 59s was a huge week in Madden. Now, if you're not watching this live and you're wondering how do I get to type in the chat, man, twitch.tv slash dub dot. You too can be here talking about the MCS, talking about Madden, talking about competitive Madden. You know, we're not going to be here talking about the team of the week cards that came out, which all sucked for me. We're not going to be talking about what abilities permanent people have. We're going to talk about who's the best at man, who's playing the best, and who we expect to win, and who just won. And the biggest news of the day, chat, I'll tell you that now, is that all 32 teams are done. We have no more janitors playing. Well, there's a couple janitors that made it through, you know. But, you know, we have the big the big. The big boys are getting ready to, to do battle. 32 people are left in the tournament. Um, Obviously, you guys know we are going to do a bracket challenge. Now, the bracket is not set till the end of this week, so we don't know exactly who plays who. We're going to look at the bracket later in this show and go over it. I'll tell you that we're going to go over all those things later in the show. But for now, we just know that there's 32 people there. We already know who's locked in. We kind of know, obviously we know the divisions and everything, so we'll talk about that. But we will do a bracket challenge. Now, YouTube, guys listening, whatever you guys are listening, bracket challenge, we're going to develop the bracket. We're going to submit rosters. I'm working on getting some, some money thrown behind this thing. It was a big deal last year. I think I came out of pocket for a couple hundred dollars at least. Gave away a bunch of needed shirts, all these things for people. So I, I want to make this something that happens every year. Uh, so we can look forward to, man, because we're going to have a bracket, um, and it's pretty cool to look at the bracket. Everybody fill out their own bracket, you know. Uh, but that's what's going to happen once we figure out the matchups next week. Now, um, I hope you guys did watch the match. I want to let you. I want you guys to tell me in the chat, man, what was your favorite game that you watched? Um, I, I pretty much, because there's been so much to talk about this week, uh, there's only really one game I want to show some plays from. Um, but let me know what you guys think, man. The, the, the main thing I want to, uh, talk about really as far as gameplay was, was Deliverance. Deliverance and Joel, uh, that was the main game we're going to talk about in a little bit. But I want to talk about all the guys that did win. You know, let's talk about the guys that did win. You know, uh, let's talk about... Got to shout out BG, winning the Bears. Always good to see the streamer BG go out there and win. Probably the biggest Bears fan we know. Uh, was super hype. Was awesome to BG. He is in the chat now. Um, and then Fancy says Phenom. Phenom, I mean, honestly, he looked really good. And Phenom's in the chat as well. Like, he looked like it was no nothing. He was a little hype. You know, he got a lot of adrenaline. I feel like he was like a young boy, like Christmas. Like, he was like the young boy at Christmas that came downstairs before everybody was woke up. Like, he was just shaking. Like, just like full of energy. But he played really good. I mean, I couldn't play that well if I was full of that much energy. But he did look really strong. Like, really strong as my light goes out. But I, I feel like I look better. Oh, remember my light I had last week? I think I'm. I think we good like this. I think, I didn't even think we good. Um... Radiant look good. We're going to talk about 2K players and, and Madden players. We're going to talk about that in a little bit as well. But uh, what, who else won? Okay. Bam won. It's been a long time for Bam uh, scheming to get back uh, at an event or at, you know, this level of a tournament. So he's going to get a nice little check and try to keep running. So scheming, uh, congratulations to him. So then we got Radiant. We're going to talk about Radiant. My guy uh, really tried to help him up out as much as uh, I could the last two weeks, picking out players, getting ready uh, to be able to play. Shout out my man, Reem Will, the sub, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, like I said, uh, Radiant looked good. Uh, that's super dope, that 2K player. Uh, we're we going to talk about that. Um, what else do I talk about? Who else won? Okay, that was the NFC North. Uh, Phenom, BG, Radiant, and Scheming. And the AFC North, Joke, for the third time in a row, was a Browns Club Series champion. Um, I did see Colin play. And first of all, we, right, we got to do this, man. I, Colin is my guy. I don't, matter of fact, I don't even know if I want to talk about Colin until I see him check into the chat. But maybe he's not sub. The, the, the chat is sub only. Um, because, I mean, we want to break it down for the people that really been subbed. 
But this is my point. Um, I watched Colin. Joke one. Congratulations to Joke. Uh, uh, Joke is uh, Joke. Uh, to me, probably looked the best at the classic. Like really, he. I thought Joke. Joke was. I think Joke's best chance to win a tournament of all the tournaments he's done well in. I I thought the classic. He was. You know what I'm saying. And I actually talked to him last night at the Eagles Madden tournaments. Man, if you guys haven't heard about these Madden tournaments that we throw every Eagles home game. Uh, so Joe came down, I was talking to him and little man about how sometimes chat, sometimes, um, Matt, actually a lot of times, shout out to X Factor with a sub. Oh, he get the one to my man Colin so he can check in. What's my point? Sometimes Madden, it's not really about being the best player because oh, we're all good, but sometimes it's about knowing the game better. I actually, a lot of the times I can look to sp- specific examples of, of tournaments where people knew the game better. You know, uh, and just new things, uh, new things before anybody else. And that's kind of how Joke was early in the year with the nasty streak with Lane Johnson. So that was his best chance to really win a belt, I thought, where he, I thought he was that much better than everybody else. But, but um, he won the Bear, the Browns Club Series. Shout out to Chichi Rito. Won the Browns Club Series, or the Bengals Club Series. So that, that was one of the bigger upsets, beating Crush and then beating Krill. Shout out to Chichi Rito, also um, who Browns. Raven, Thunderball. Thunderball's another person. Skimbo said last week on his show that he was tough. Man, Thunderball, look, as much as I mean, he's a little goofy looking. You know, he's a little he's a little bit awkward looking. But he he looked strong. Like, as far as people that look good, he I mean, as far as not turning the ball over and really kind of being in control all the way through, Thunderball looked tough. He looked tough. Like, I I, ha- I really have no negatives to take away from his game. Really. He ran a doubles, a south thing, like, or whatever, that doubles north, south, north pole shit. It looked good. He had some sneaky dots. He played really good. Um, You know, uh, so shout out to Thunder for winning. I know that was a big deal. The Ravens Club Series, I, it looked pretty good. Um, the last person that won that I, Ravens, Browns, Steelers, Deliverance. We will talk about that next. Uh, while they're, uh, but I do want to talk about the Browns because Colin, like, I expected a lot of this Colin character because I we've been hearing about this. Chat, have we not been hearing about this Colin? Like he's like the 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 you know he's like the the redheaded stepchild of Kevin them like like nobody really like nobody ever seen him play before. He's just been sneaky, been under the cut. Like, I mean, when I say under the cut, I mean, he, un, like, he's been, like, like, he don't live in the house. He lives in, like, the shed out back. Like, nobody's seen him play. So, I was like, damn. Uh, I was like, man, this is going to be interesting. I'm excited to see young Colin play the game of John Madden football. Now, I will tell you this. Now, I don't know how this young Colin is, is young. You know, that that's what the craziest part to me is, like, Young Colin looked older than me, legitimately. So I, that's the first thing I was upset about. Because if we can just throw our name young in front of everything, I mean, at, at the end of the day, like, can I not be young? Why can't I be 24 next year? I'm just going to tell people I'm 24. Like, that's what's crazy. Like, it... I, 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 as an old person, I was offended at that because I felt like my man didn't want to embrace his age. I'm saying, and another thing I was upset about with young Colin is that, I mean, geez, let's, as I now check, come with me. I do, I, I didn't want to talk about this game. I just wanted to clown Colin because one, he looked old as shit. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I can be called Young Dub now. That's how I feel about the situation. And I didn't want to talk about this game until I just saw a crazy pick that my man Colin just threw. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and one thing I did comment on, man, as much as like that, Jesus. First play of the game, quality play. This is what I'm going to tell y'all. Like, as much as we clown bugs, chat, as much as we clown bugs, it's a lot of motherfuckers that needed do rags. It really is. It's a lot of y'all that needed do rags. 
what I'm saying? Not only to win, but y'all really legit just need do rags. Colin got the, and this is where I tell you, because, you know, Colin, he's a friend of mine, you know, it's a loyal supporter, so, you know, I got him on the Twitter, you know what I'm saying? I think I do, so, yeah, young Colin, you know what I'm saying? And, and I got a little mad, because, you know, what I said, I said he catfishing a little bit. He's super catfishing. He don't, he don't got this head of hair no more. Bro, you can't have a Twitter pick like this and then be out here like said, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that. Like, bro, this is not good. This is how you get caught up. This is how the women get mad at you, bro. Like, you can't do this. You can't be out here in a suit at the hotel with the with the fresh, like, mini Kobe fro and then really look like this. She's going to be pissed, bro. And I don't know how you're going to talk your way out of that. It's not going to happen. So we got to update this goddamn profile picture. It needs to happen. All right? Anyway, I don't. It's really, it's really not too much to talk about the game. My man Colin came out here and literally just threw the word, like just threw the ball around the court. And this, I mean, this is what about passing, man? When you pass, you have opportunities to, to lose the game. You have opportunities to, as we got super bagged right there. I don't even know where the worst pass was that I clicked on to just to just make jokes, but it was probably the worst pass that he threw. I forget where it was. By the way, this is what we talk about the, the risks and, and rewards of passing and, you know what I'm saying? The first, I feel like you had four TDs. I feel like you had a touchdown every time you, you went to pass, but you just didn't know how to, how to pass to. This is, yeah, right here. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just bad. You know, like, like when you're scared, like, listen. For a man with a head of hair like that, you you would have thought you've been through some shit before. Like, if you got a head of hair like that, you would have thought you've been in every situation. Like, you've seen a lot of situations. Chad, I'll tell you this right now. I've seen a lot of situations. I've seen a lot of situations. You can tell by the hair. That's what I thought about Colin. I said, listen, this man's prepared for everything. He's been through it all. First time. He goes to this guy. <laughs> Lord Jesus. You know, but like I said, essentially, and I, I'm not going to kill Kyle no more because I'm, I really don't want to kill him about how he played. I just wanted to bust his balls and say he needed a do-rag because at the end of the day, that was like his first time up there. And he was playing somebody that's been up there a lot, you know. So, I'm not the, the first to really kill him that crazy. Uh, he did just throw a bunch of picks. But it pretty much goes back to what has happened all year is that there is zero risk in running the ball this year. None. They have completely took fumbles. Matter of fact, I'll tell you this. I will tell you this. That I have seen more, and you guys can agree with this, we have seen more fumbles from the quarterback taking sacks in the pocket than we have seen from these running backs running 30 times a game. They have completely removed the risk in running the ball X amount of times. So you have somebody that goes out there and tries to air it out against a good defensive player, he has so many more risks than somebody that just hands it off, hands it off, hands it off, hands it off, hands it off. So somebody that is a runner has really no risk. They won't turn the ball over unless they're really an airhead. Like, seriously. So, somebody that passes, you make, if you make a mistake, boom, that's a whole possession gone. Just like that. You know, and there's really no risk to running the ball. And, and that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much the bit, one of the biggest things f going for a runner. Like, if you're a runner, you, you should never turn the ball over. Honestly. Never turn the ball over. Uh, but that's just how I feel. Uh, I didn't want to bust Colin Ball that much. But like I said, it looked like a lot of y'all need some do-rags, man. Ish was another one. Ish, you know, I, we've never seen this before. Now, I want to get I want to get the Ish. Ish is my guy. Like, my guy. But we've never seen somebody, chat, go hat first half, no hat second half. Like, that game got to him so bad, he said, I had enough of this hat. Middle of the game. Just, all right, I'm good. I'm out. Seen enough. 
it's pretty it's pretty nice as we go to the Pittsburgh Club Series. Shit got real for Ish. See, as we see, chat, come here. Second quarter. Ish got the fresh dad cap. You know what I'm saying? And we, we fast forward to the second half. Nope. He had enough. He had enough of the cap. Now, Ish got the cleft going on. You know the slight cleft. It's pretty crazy. The slight cleft. Nothing... Nothing too much, but he got a slight cleft. But it's another man that could use a do right now. Joel, I will tell you this, man. Joel, he he is like the only black man that cuts his hair with scissors. Like I swear to God, he cuts his hair with scissors. I I, I just don't understand. Like I don't think he's ever had a real haircut. He just go up there and just take a pair pair of scissors and just go after it. It's nuts. But, by the way, I will tell you this. It was good to see Joel playing in the game. He looks good. He looks fit. You know what I'm saying? He looks healthy. You know what I'm saying? Good to see Joel back. Always full of energy. And I and and I really thought he was going to win this game. He he beat the shit out of Ish, which was kind of predict, or kind of not predictable. And the other thing about Joel is that he had a really good scheme. He really used this, uh, this doubles. He was looking strong, and, and and there's a lot of people, bro. He, he don't. I swear to God, this looked like he just cut it with scissors up here in the front. Like he just made sure that joint clean. I promise. But anyway, uh, he did beat the hell out of Ish. Ish shout out my man Ish. He fought. Joel, I say I don't really look at people. I I I've, I've felt like the swag been pretty cool since then. My man, you know what pisses me off about this game? How can nobody pass out of this shit? Like, they just have no idea how to just, like, put, like, a, a slant and an out route or a hitch and, a, and, a, and a, another hitch. and a, Like, I, I I was pissed off watching this guy lock down try to pass the ball. Like, I was legitimately pissed off at how brutal it was. Like, just brutal. But anyway, this was a battle. Shout out to Deliver. Deliver has played defense all day. And uh, where where is the first play of this game? The first play here it is right here. Now I thought lockdown was gonna pop out and be tough. I thought he was gonna. I told you guys last week this was a good club and it was a good club. Now and I I thought Joel was the favorite going into this. I. I don't know why. Like, Deliverance is consistently winning this one, but he I don't think he has ever looked good in one game. And Joel gets a fumble on the first play. It is super hard to come back from that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's super... That, and that's tough. Like, I'm like, shit, that's, that's kind of ass. He looks sick. Like, he, he legit... He, he kind of looks sick. I'd be sick, too. But after all that, Joel, uh, Joel had, like, the best drive of his life after this, chat. Like, he, okay, so delivering scores. Now, I want to go over this drive. I, I thought Joel had a scheme. He had the mobile quarterback. He had Austin Eckler. Yeah, he danced because he lost. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you that. And this drive, I, I, and th let me tell another thing. As we see, deliverance is running 3-3-5 odd. Now, chat, I want to let you guys know. That I want to ask you guys this question because you guys have watched – yeah, Joel, dance. 0-3 oh, if you dance. You stand up, dance. You, I'm telling you. I told you, do not dance. But this, is what I, but this is what I ask you guys. So, this is the 3-3-5 odd Madden 18's best defense, right? Have we seen any other Madden Pro run this defense this year? Phenom wasn't dancing. He was kind of bobbing. No, Phenom was like kind of just... Phenom had like ADD was just... He was on Adderall or some shit. No, he wasn't dancing. He was like mosh pitting and... Uh, that shit was different. These dudes legit did little jigs. But anyway... This is my question. 3-3-5 odd. We know about 3-3-5 odd. One, one of these guys is a linebacker. Now it's like a defensive end. The other one's a nickel back. Uh, it's cover three. That's the one downside. It's cover three. No, Phenom. I don't count count Phenom as dancing. But anyway, we can go over it. We can we can go look at it, and we can we can watch it and debate after this. But look, it's, it's cover three, and Joel I thought killed it this drive. This was 
honestly, Joel is he's not a surgeon. He's never been a surgeon type player ever. He's a playmaker on offense. He wants to run the ball, go out there and make plays. Broken plays, he's one of the best in the world. Broken plays, running the ball, run stick, all that stuff. Open field, he's one of the best. That's how he's always been. He's never been a surgical person like that. But this drive I thought was, uh, this was probably the best drive that I've ever seen him have at a live event. And this play, this is the play right here that I was mad and we talked about Jay himself, right? How he ran that pitch or he ran that little toss to Tyreek Hill, the Wildcat, and never went back to it. Chat, this was now, like I said, we know 335 odd. It is cover three. What's that mean is, is that there's flat zones on both sides. There's hook curls in the middle. There is no vert hook. Now, this play that he draws up, I hope he shows the play art again. But this is the best cover three beat in play, a surgical play that he put on the field. Because you have to run with this tight end route because it gets because it's a streak. He's going to run with him. And now we have a drag and we have a curl that's in the perfect coochie spot. And I just love how this 3 through 5 odd blitz works. And this absolutely killed cover three. It killed it. And I don't think Joel runs that setup again the rest of the game. I really don't think he runs this again. That that play killed it. it would, honestly, like I was like, okay. He got some shit. That's what I was thinking. He got some shit. Now we go back to the Austin Eckler getting busy. He's killing his 3 through 5 odd. Little draw action. Doesn't kill it there. I think he cooks up another dot somewhere. That This is the play he was fell in love with the whole game. And Deliverance, I will tell you this about Deliverance. He definitely be doing this man up, people. And, and he definitely does get a little adjusty. And it works for him all the time. But this is the play Joel fell, around, fell in love with the whole game. Post the wide, wheel route on the running back. Which is, you know, like everybody's favorite dot. But he was killing him. He was killing him this first drive of offense. And that's what, the one thing about getting a fumble to the crib is you don't have to show it. You get seven points without having to show any of your offense. And that's always a great thing. Did we get RPO bubbled there? Yeah, he just, he ran the ball and. Oh, I guess he really, a nice little run stick right there. I guess he, I guess he just ran the ball. He only ran that one, that one pass play. Really, that worked. But I'm telling you, I do not think he went back to that play at all. I really don't. Now, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but I don't think he went back to that, that pass play. And, and and I'll tell you what, if I'm Deliverance and I run this, I'm getting a better running. If I run this much, I'm getting me a, If I'm going to the next level against 32, against the Goons, I'm getting me a better running back. But he, once again, has escape artists as well. But he played good. I mean, just real basic offense. Nothing crazy. Just run and talk. And I, uh, uh, another thing, I forgot about this game. Joel has never played against the run. Like, he has never played run defense. Ever. Because nickel normal against strong eye. Bro, what? Like, bro, what? And, like, we're clearly got, I mean, the number advantage over here is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I like, like, 4. Like, it's just, it's it's rough right now. It's bad. Yeah, Joel hasn't played in two. But I literally, I mean, he just hasn't played any. Any. Well, now he's in a little bit better set. But I felt like he didn't. He didn't have an eye for like where he was weak on run defense. Like he didn't have an eye for what was going to happen. And Mo was actually calling it out during the game. Now, that was his best run defense. That was the first run defense that looked like run defense that we play against. Honestly, no. But he he didn't. He didn't look bad. I, obviously, yeah, I'm tripping. His run defense was... The worst thing you can do is go in here and get ran on, really. Especially with Tony Pollard. It's one thing if you're getting trucked and juked. And then, but but to, to get ran on by Tony Pollard... Tony Pollard will not... If you're, if you're running the ball this much, I 1,000% I, I've, I've would suggest a better running back. I don't even, I, I, I don't even know if Deliverance passed this game. This could be a run just to make sure you stay in field goal range. 
And he almost got out of field goal range. Nice deliverance, man. This is tough. Does he does he go for this? Does he cook up a dot right here? Because he didn't get in the field goal range? I mean, just pure dots out here. Just pure lasers. Uh, is this a playmaker? This is why we always hate playmaker, man. I want to see this play. I want to see this play. Uh, but we got a slant. We got a corner route. We got a hitch. These guys are running right fucking in next to each other. I am playmaker. That's what I mean about, yo, Deliverance, they win it, but that shit don't look good. I'll tell you that. Putting these dudes out here at the same damn spot, corner route, streak, like, he gets it done, man. He gets it done. I think it was a great playmaker because if you if you watch it, watch how right when he playmakers he like runs into a linebacker who's covering his curl and he gets and he slows down so he's almost stopped like a hitch. So he stops it and goes up. Yeah, look at that. It's like playmaker cam. Just uh, it's just a huge play in the game. And this what did Joel use his timeouts here? I I guess I would too. Not on second down, I want to use a timeout. Actually, when the hell did he use his timeouts? And one thing about Mo, I, listen, Mo be on point with every every single thing. You know, and, and using timeouts here is rough because it, even if Deliverance gets a field goal, the way he's playing offense with, with freaking Pollard, it's going to be hard to shift for him to score a touchdown, Chat, Right? Running the ball? Like he's not out here dotting? And Joel comes out here and calls the timeout? I guess he does call a timeout right there. Unless he called it like on defense. Yeah, he, call, he calls timeout to try to get the ball back. Bro, once you're up this possession, like he's getting the ball happy. He's up seven and he's up a possession. Like that's that's rough to use those timeouts right there. But then, like I said, we go back to this playmaker shit. Boom, dot. So now Joel, Joel has called all these timeouts for him. Had Joel not called timeout, it's a guaranteed field goal. But now, because we're, the clock would be so low or deliverance wouldn't have any timeouts left. But now, he, he pretty much, Joel pretty much gave deliverance six timeouts. Against a guy that's not high-powered. Not high power, bro. And this one got lucky as hell. Super lucky. I mean, you had a run stick of a two-year-old right here. I guess you, I guess that this guy doesn't shed as a touchdown anyway. But Jesus. It's, I, I can't lie, chat. For a bunch of runners, I done seen some shitty run stick out here. Yeah, he can't get over here. Like, you got to go click on him and move him out of the... You got this... He got lucky. I don't know why Deliverance didn't snap. Oh, I guess he didn't flip the stretch. Look at this guy. You have to get him... You have to help him. Help that poor fella. Oh, damn. That shit hit hard. Never mind. That was good defense. Deliverance going to cook up with laser? Jesus Christ. This is looking like hell. Actually, I mean, I'm not even mad at all these route combos. Oh, this play was hell in a cell. Oh, not that play. What? Oh, yeah. He kicks the field goal anyway. Because he drops that. Well, he had just called timeout before that fumble, Jesse. He just called timeout before that fumble. And one thing, man, you have to you have to realize who you're playing as we get here at Joel's first drive of the second half. Bro, neither of these dudes are really high-powered. I would even say Joel's more high-powered because he has this superstar running back. You know what I'm saying, chat? You guys agree? Yeah, he had just called timeout. He had just called timeout before that hit stick. But Joel is, Joel is more high-powered. 
Now deliverance has gone straight to mutt defense. Just basic, just cover three because he wants to stop the run, which won for him. But the biggest thing about it is it's pretty much the same coverage as this three through five odd. He said, you know what, I'm done trying to, I'm just going to stop the run. Because that's pretty much how he gave up points is just getting ran on. So he just makes an adjustment and says, you know, I'm going to go to this, whether it's nickel normal, blows up the run. Great play right there. Uh, such an underrated play. Blowing up the inside zone right here. Bang, getting him to a third and long. And and honestly, oh, this looks like, yeah, one four. he goes 1-4-6. One well, a few times he goes 1-4-6, so I expect blitzing 10 people at me. Uh, he just goes off the edge. Actually, actually really good defense. I would have went max protect against this, though. Like, what, like... Against this, I, I would have max protected like a hoe. Boom. He bags him. Now, this is where Joel loses the game. Yeah. You're playing. You're not playing. This, you, you know, it's 4th and 12. I don't have any play for 4th and 12, Chad. Do you guys have a play for 4th and 12? I don't know what it could be. You know? Just, just play defense. No... Know yourself and know your opponent. That's all. Both. Not none of you guys are high powered. Seriously, and I wouldn't max protect here. I don't know what Deliverance actually bags him because he like this. Deliverance played good defense. I, I like he really was like a st defensively. He was really tough, honestly. No, this is he because he, he bagged he bagged what he put out there. Like he bagged this shit. Like he put like if if I would have gave you the play art. Deliverance would have played that defense. He just bat like if I showed then that, like I love when that happens. Like if if we showed Deliverance is Joel's defense, right? Or Joel's offensive play, this is the defense he would have played, and it worked out perfectly. He had the bag out here, I mean Joel had all day to throw, and sending that spy was the best thing he could do there. But that was the that was great defense. Boom! Finally pops one. Finally pops a run, and now it's like, damn. Now I'm telling you, Joel did not go back to that that pass play. And we see Deliverance is just in 3-3, three, three, or nickel normal, pretty much. It looks like nickel normal. Just, he not pinching his line. He not pinching his linebackers. He not baseline it. These dudes are out here. But he's stopping the run, and we're going to, the, this can't be the play we run. Oh, there you go. He's stopping the run. Actually, a really good lurk, I think. I don't know. I think Joel could hit the running back. But, like, this is just cover three. I think he could have hit the running back, but it looked like he wanted to go get it. But, yeah, I guess he could have threw it right here. Like, it ain't that good of a lurk. Holy shit. And he even bumps here. Yeah, th this could be a touchdown. Chad, we've watched this game right here. This could be a touchdown. Hit him, boom, juke that guy. But Lawrence Taylor made a play. We get to a third and long. Third and 16. One, four, six. He, like, hey, listen, he played down and distance football, really. Because... And this is, I, I'm telling you, he's just, he's calling the right play every time. What's crazy is he has blitzed this person every single time against this doubles. Every time. Now, this time, da -da, this time he does the opposite. I'm, I'm hiding on this guy like a scumbag. <laughs> and I'm blitzing off this side. Joel blocks that guy thinking he's blitzing. No, he blitzes off this edge. Like, he really was one step ahead in every defensive call, honestly. And that, that, uh. He really was hiding. He really was hiding, getting glitchy. Now we're back to nickel normal. I mean, stretch right for a thousand yards, please. Oh, uh, he got a lucky dead dude didn't get blocked. Nope. Now we're stretch left, motion this guy over. I'll just show you. you don't need to motion anybody. Yeah, Joel. Joel. All right. Pretty bad run defense. But like I said, it was just about that one setup. He really didn't go back to man. And Deliverance, I mean, watching this game again, this is the second time I watched this game. Dude, he really has called the right defensive play every time. Like, he has played, called a very, very good defensive game. Seriously. It doesn't look like that, but he, he really has called the right defense every single play. And what do you, 
everybody wants to win. I I just I just would hope Deliverance gets a. Uh, where does he make that? He makes this wild play with Steve Young this game. I will tell you this, chat. Every single game that Deliverance plays is a slobber knocker. Every game he plays is a slobber knocker. I think this is the play he makes. Is it? Oh my God, this play is crazy. With Steve Young, this this won him the game. But I think Joel sends the spy early. But uh, you kind of actually there is no spy. It's just cover four. He's on the line, but like he sent that guy. I mean, golly. You, I mean, you just got to have a spy somewhere. Brandon King isn't going to catch Steve Young. I'll tell you that. And that was, that was pretty much the end of the game. So shout out to my man, Deliverance. Like like I, I, like I said, man, from, from the naked eye, it don't look that good. It don't. But, I mean, he gets it done. Now I will tell you something about Deliverance, man. Tucking your ears in your hat is fucking sick. It's sickening. Like, you you gotta get a smaller hat, bro. Gotta get a smaller hat. Like, it is not 2002 anymore, bro. Like, you can... If you have to tuck your ears into your hat... Chat. Chat. This is a grown man. Like, this is... They said he's a guidance counselor at a school. They call him Mr. Pinter. He's the guy... And his ears are tucked in his hat. No. No, listen. I, I think he just has a very small head. First of all, pause. Second of all, they make cat hats for toddlers. How do y'all not notice this? I, I thought everybody would notice this. I really wanted to talk... Wait to talk about this on, on, on the podcast. But I thought somebody would bring it up after he won. Bro, tucking your ears in your hat is... I listen. Your ears might stay warm. You know, maybe his ears are warm. But this is worse than boot cuts. I think this is worse than boot cuts. Now, you guys let me know. Tucking your ears in your hat is crazy. It is. It's nuts. Like, this is a big-ass hat, chat. Like, this is a... They used a lot of cloth for this fucker. Nasty award, nasty award of the week is tucking in your, your, uh, whatchamacallit, your ears to your hat. Seriously. That's nuts. Oh, man, we've seen a lot of people that need do-rags. You know what I'm saying? We need a lot of people that need do-rags. But this Bugs hat. Bugs, if Bugs played for this, this Pittsburgh Knights, Bugs would wear this hat. This shit would be tight on Bugs. Honestly. But no, for real, tucking your... No, nah, all just side though, he did play great, great defense. And you don't got to do much... When you play good defense and people gamble on fourth downs and stuff like that, you don't have to play much offense, Chad. You don't have to. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that... I, I thought tuck... I thought tucking your ears into your into your hat, Chad. Like, I don't think I have a hat that I could do that with. Like, What? Like, how big do you... I do have hats, though, Chet. I do have hats. Now, I feel like this is how your hat is supposed to fit you. Right? Like a baseball player, almost. Is this not how we do it nowadays? Is this not... Am I not hip? I feel like it's supposed to look like it fits. Right? I don't like the sticker. I hate the sticker. What? Explain to me when people keep the sticker. Why do people do that shit? What? What's the point? Oh, because it looks like it's brand new. So what the fuck? I can't go buy a twenty dollar hat. Like my man Ish had the dad hat from the Steelers Pro Club, the first hat they make, and he had a sticker on it. Oh, the bottom? Do I have a? Yeah, I got a sticker on the bottom. Yeah, there's like. 
Because if you buy a hat, there is like, ten, they put like 10 stickers on this shit now. Some of them have like a sticker on this whole brim. I mean, under the brim, I, you don't see under the brim. I guess because I'm tall, unlike you little children. I'm, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even like wearing this hat. This is a Nerd Street hat, right? And it's like, it's like his hat. It's like a snapback, right? And I don't like wearing it because it's like flat brimmed. I like, I feel like it, you, we need a little curve now. I feel like the flat brim is dead, chat. Am I wrong? Like the flat, the flat brim is like, this is the snapback too. So I can get this like deliverance and shit. I gotta, I gotta put it on like the last, to tuck my ears in. Yeah, yeah, tuck them fuckers in, boys, warm them up, keep them warm, keep them Jones warm, bro, I'm doing the rest of the show like this, this is how they beat, chat, you know what I'm saying, I feel like I have a better hat to do this with, though, I feel like I have a better hat. I mean, my ears are kind of warm. Like, the, the tip of my ear is kind of, I, I, you know, it's kind of warm. I look younger with it like this. No, it's it's on the second strap. Look at the ear tucking. The ear tucking is fire. Actually, I, you know what? Let me go check what I got. Give me two seconds. I promise you. I promise you guys. I have something. I have something that's popping. Way more popping than this. I have hats now, Chad. Okay. Now chat. This is my most popping hat right here. You see the ears? Tuck. Tuck on the ears. Shout out to Woo, man. You get the ears tucked and you good. You know what I'm saying? Once you get the ears tucked, you good. But, like I said, Deliverance played good, played great defense, made the right defensive call every single time. I wish Joel would have went back to that one play that just killed cover three. He didn't go back to that. He didn't go back to that enough, uh, but it was good to see Joel back. Good to see him pop. Deliverance, man, we talked about underrated and overrated players. Bro, I have not seen... I, I don't think Deliverance ever looked good, but he just wins. I mean, and and he wins slobber knockers. Like, sl every, have we, like, he he's always in a sweat. He's always in a sweat. Always. Like, he is a sweatshop master. Maybe, I'm telling you, maybe it's the ears. Maybe it's the ears. If your ears stay warm, the rest of you doesn't sweat. Bro, I'm telling you, making the live event, boot cuts, tucking my, wear the tightest, the tightest jersey, wear the, the Evil Ken jersey, the Truzy jeans. Bro, what's the ultimate outfit so far from, yo, let's think about that right now. The ultimate outfit from the, from the club series so far. What is the ultimate outfit? It's got to be the Truzy jeans. Truzy got ahead of jeans. You know what I'm saying? Truzy jeans. Who's... Who got the wild? AKG had blue socks. Ken had the, the, the child's jersey. The D. Croft khakis. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we might give Truzy the shoes. The Truzy choked, <laughs> choked Yeezy's double knot. The D. Croft khakis. The Deliverance tucked in ear hat. 
the evil Ken jersey, the, no, the boys' glasses, bro. Oh, AKG, no, nah, yeah. Uh, listen, that's when, see, I nobody else noticed the blue socks. I noticed the blue socks. That's why we didn't kill the blue jersey, the blue, the blue hoodie. At first, they were like, are you going to kill the blue hoodie because you killed Crush because he had a blue hoodie under his Bengals jersey. And I said, listen, I was going to kill AKG, but when I saw the blue socks, I said, man, he took it to another level. So I didn't kill him. It was just super drip. So Bulls glasses, Evil Ken jersey, Deliverance hat, <laughs> D. Croft khakis, AKG socks, and Truzy tight ass Yeezys. Truzy's the only man with Yeezys, and he tied him up like he's about to go run full court. Swear to God, he's like, I'm going to run full court, boys. You know when you tie your shoe? You know when you tie your shoe for real? You go, like to really tighten the joint up, like. Tell me, listen, you guys play sports, you guys know that last little tight. Tighten them joints up. Double knot. I'm telling you, that's what he do. Oh, the Joe, no, the Joe hairline is straight scissors. It's almost like the Joe be out here with the lighter to this shit, like. Like, what the fuck? Oh, he, t yo, Truzy. Nah, Kyle, we talked about Colin, bro. Colin, Colin might have to come home, bro. Colin might have to come home. Joe, bro, Joe don't have bad hair. He just don't, he don't get haircuts. Like, he don't give a fuck. It's, no, it's nothing really, uh, it's, it's nothing, he, like, he just don't, like, he just don't give a fuck. Now, we'll, all right, let's do this. I mean, dude, this shit, chat, this shit is funny, bro. Y'all can't front this shit. Bro, this shit is funny. <laughs> like, bro, your face is too big to have a brim that big. Like, he don't get any rain with that. Like, you get no rain on you with this joint. You don't need an umbrella. Brim cover his... Brim damn near is shoulder to shoulder. That joint is crazy, chat. Like, when your brim is that, like, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Yeah, the ears tucked in is nuts. It really is. I'm having trouble tucking my ears and maybe my head's a little bit bigger. My hat, the, like his hat goes like, that joint is like, it's like here, chat. Them joints, them ears is in, in. Colin getting dreads? Colin, you getting dreads? Don't listen to Clef. Clef ain't been hiding shit for years. We've been clowning Clef about his hairline since he started streaming. What is he hiding? Colin, cut that shit off, bro. You can't go back to the mini fro. That shit is dead. Damn. Anyway, this is my the tuck your ears in your hat gives you superpowers. Um, I do want to talk about Radiant though. Shout out Radiant in the chat. Radiant's like, he's like a top 20 point guard in 2K. He's in a 2K league. He is on my Philadelphia Sixers gaming. If you guys don't know Radiant, all right, do any of you guys watch the 2K league? All just aside, I enjoy it. Um, I watch the 2K league. Now, I'll be honest. This is what the 2K league struggles with is that gamers, listen, gamers have ADD. We do. Well, let's be honest. We have, we have ADD. Um, and one of the things that both Madden and 2K, what they try to do is they try to cater to the sports audience. Like let's get 2K players to, or let's get NBA watchers to watch the 2K league. Now people, I, it's a tough sell, but maybe it works. Um, but essentially they have a league and that's what 2K league has. And when I say they struggle with ADD is I don't want to watch regular season 2K League. I'm be honest. I don't want to watch regular season WR. I don't want to watch regular season Ultimate League. I don't want to watch regular season anything. I barely want to watch regular season NFL. But there's only 16 games, so it matters. And only six teams make the playoffs from each conference. Only 12 teams in the whole league make the conference. You know? So it kind of matters. But 
I do watch a lot of 2K League. Rating is very good. He's one of the best. He's one of the top five players in the entire 2K League. So he is a top five NBA 2K. My player, you know, control one person. He is the point guard. And he won the Detroit Lions Club Series. So, I got to take this off. I can't lie. I don't know how bald people wear hats. It's so uncomfortable. Like, it's like the biggest, the biggest, um comparison I can give you guys is it's like Velcro. Like the st- the little tiny stubbles from shaving my head like just just hold on to every little fabric of these things and it's it's so uncomfortable. Like it has ruined hats for me. I cannot wear hats anymore. Yeah. But anyway, so it, it brings back to something that we've had a debate on what's better what's easier to play, what's harder to play Madden or 2K. Uh, and you know the 2K kids, they're like, oh, look, we told you, 2K is the best, way harder to be a 2K player than Madden, look at this, blah, say, blah. And I will tell you this a million times, that Madden, for me, Madden is a lot harder, Radiant just happened to put a lot of effort into it, and I will also tell you that the people like Radiant who are top 5 at that game, or top 50 at that game, are gamers, they are good at video games, you know, they understand it. Also, people that watch basketball more than likely watch football. And vice versa. People that play Madden more than likely play 2K. And vice versa. You know? And so, my biggest point of saying this is, if one of those top 20, top 50 2K players, you know, really went ahead and tried really hard at Madden, they'd probably be pretty damn good at it. You know? Uh, Rival is the worst defensive player ever. Possible. Regardless of how it happened. My point is that, um, at the end of the day, elite gamers could be elite gamers. You know, that's how I feel. I do. I will always tell you, 2K is substantially easier than Madden. One million percent. Madden's a lot harder to play. And and I will always go to this. I will always go to this analogy: is that if my girlfriend was over here right now, we'd have more fun playing 2K because she can pass and shoot than she would be able to play Madden because it's more complicated. That's all. That's all. That that's all I'm saying. But when you when you're that level of player, and you have that much obviously stick, and you you're you're smart enough to be able to play the game. Uh, yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna do well, honestly, and he did well. So we'll see how far he goes. We will talk more about um exactly who we're picking as the show goes on, especially next week. But one of the topics that came up this week, and I believe. Uh, Pony was the one who said this topic. Uh, he brought it up about Joke. Joke, I talked about he won his his third straight Browns Club Series by defeating the bald Colin. You know what I'm saying? Old Colin. Colin came up. I thought Colin was going to look like Henry. That's what I thought. I, young Colin. He might look like Henry. He looked like old Colin. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that was rough. So Joke won, and it, it started a debate about who is the best player in the MCS era to not have a belt? Now, there's two options. Now, we can put some honorable mentions out there. I don't know who you guys would even have as an honorable mention in the MCS era without a belt. Boogs might be up there. Seriously, Boogs might be honorable mention. Um, can we think of any other honorable mentions that have made runs? Blocky, honorable mention. Yes, that's a good one. Um, let me try to think. Um Honorable mess. I think Boogs, Blocky. Um, obviously, um, no, I, I, I know problem and joke, you assholes. You don't see it on the screen. Do you not? Are you not looking at the screen? Strafing, nah. Stra- for me, strafing. Uh, strafing. What you gonna call it? He made one run, but he wasn't as consistent as Boogs or uh, Blocky for sure. Clef been playing for two years and he really ain't been close, honestly. As much as that's my guy, I think Clef is I think Clef is top five player. I I'll, I'll answer that every single time. He's top five player. He he hasn't made I can't even think of the furthest I guess clubs last year <clears throat> and he did pretty good the classic here. I guess little man yeah, little I honestly think little man's probably honorable mention. Now this is my question. Yes, that is true. Furious Styles, as we say, problem problem does have three belts. If we count like belts, like let's be real, 
But MCS era, and when it comes down to this, who, who? First of all, I would never argue this thing. Like if, I, if my name, I would never want to. I would never want to be that person. You know, it's kind of like I don't want to say it's a. It's a backhanded. Do you understand? What I'm it's not like it's a backhanded compliment, but it's not something you argue about. You know, what I'm saying it's not something you really puff your chest out and say, "No, that's me." You know what I'm saying? Like that's to me. That's that's one problem. Tweeted out about it. I'm like, bro, who gives? Like, who gives a fuck? Like who? Like you don't want to be in a, a race to be the second best or be race to be the, the the best loser. Like to me, that's that's kind of that's that was corny. That's how I felt. Like what? Who cares? You know. So then it comes down to debate. Uh, who, so it's been four years. Well, it's been what's it been, Chat? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's been about four years. 17, 18, 19, 20. Because we're halfway done 20, and 16 was kind of a half a year. So, for me, um, yeah, it goes down to, it's two different questions. Who's been more consistent, and who's had a better MCS? You know, um, Joke has lost one final. Um, Problem has lost four finals. I Honestly, I feel like, and you guys can agree with me right here, I feel like Problem has had a better MCS, but Joke is, has been more consistent. In the four years, he has been more consistent. Consistently Final 8, consistently Final 4, for four years. But, you know what I'm saying? But for me, at the end of the day, I feel like Problem has still had, had a better MCS because he's made so much money losing in those finals, you know? But without the last two years where Joke was still popping, you know what I mean? So I feel like... Consistent some one joke, but it's still a better MCS has still gotta be problem. You know what I'm saying? Hey McDots, that's what happened when you're in the jungle. When you're in the jungle, it gets a little different. Dirk. Joke doesn't play no game other than Madden. So who what that's a stupid that's a terrible excuse. Then that's problem's fault. That's all the more re like why would that be an excuse? That's a dump like bro. That's all. But anyway, I, like I said, I really don't have an answer. I feel like, like I said, I feel like Joke um, has been more consistent, but Problem still has better MCS and Problem beats Joke when they play. I mean, I guess I can't think of how many times they played, but I know, I know one group stage, I believe Man 16, some groups. I believe Madden 17, Madden Challenge, the first tournament they played in groups. Uh, obviously, the Final Four of the Madden Championship that Skimbo won, uh, problem beat Joke with two kick returns. Uh, but anyway, that that's just how I feel about it. I don't know if y'all disagree or, you know what I'm saying? I mean, ultimately, uh, you can only do what you want, you know? As far as putting time into the game and not, I mean, just do what makes you happy, you know? I'll tell you this right now. You can't expect to not put 100% into this game and come out here and win. I feel like it hurt. I feel like me. I, that's what happened to me. I'm not, my heart is not in this game like it should be. Because my heart is in more like, let's build streams. Let's build podcasts. Let's build this videos. Let's do this. Let's try to host this event. Let's try to do that. My heart is not in competing at Madden like it was four years ago. It's not. You know, and I feel like problems the same way. I just, my heart is not in at the same level. I mean, dude, like, I, it, these guys that compete, man, even these kids that are grinding men, they, they like, live for this shit. You know, and no matter how good you are, how smart you are, you're not going to half-ass Madden anymore. That's dead. Like, you're not half-ass in Madden, ever. You know what I'm saying? Ever. Yeah. So that, that's one of the things, like, if you try to do other stuff, you try to, it's tough to balance the act, it really is. You see these people winning, I mean, these are the people that are grinding the hell out the, out the game, man. But there has been a rule that they implemented this week. They tried to put a backup running back spot in Mutt, and for some reason they, they couldn't do it. But they made the rule that you cannot put wide receivers at running back. Now, Chad, I will ask you guys. Why did they make the rule that you cannot put a halfback at running back? Why? Because I don't really, I really don't understand the um, the reasoning. I want to ask you guys, what do you think? What is the reasoning for that? They got bored. 
Like, what does that mean? Yeah, but like, what? Talk to me about like. It really is specific. I I, I really do feel like it is for West Coast. Um, but for me, it's like for me, why? Like, that's my question. Why? And when you really think about it, um, I mean, they want everyone to run. Why? Like, why? Like, I don't know. I, and I'm thinking now, I wish I had answers to give you guys. I feel like I'm supposed to have the answers, but it's like, why? Is why? Like, seriously. But wh- why do they want people to run? Do they want people to run? Because I'm, I'm thinking right now. Um. They got tired of seeing the wide receiver in the backfield. What the, I I just what does that mean? They got tired of seeing the wide receiver in the backfield. They got tired of explaining that. Like like yo, we have a wide receiver back here, blah blah blah, and this is why we have a wide receiver. Do you think that like essentially turns off a casual fan that wants to watch Madden? Cause if I'm a casual fan, right? I'm be real. Let's think casual fans. Um, Ty- oh, you running with Tyreek Hill? Let me. That's pretty cool. Like, let's be, let's let's really think about it. You are Jimmy Joe, not the man, Jimmy Joe that just turned on Madden. You know the NFL, right? Are you gonna say, damn, he's running with Tyreek Hill? I'm turning this shit off. Or are you gonna say he's running with Tyreek Hill? Let me see if he can score. Is he fast? Like, what is more likely to happen for the viewer? To say I want to watch Tyreek Hill run the ball or no, turn this shit off. I'd rather watch Pollard run the ball. Seriously. I, I want to see... T- shit. I, put it like this. If we were watching the Chiefs right now and Tyreek Hill was the I formation running back and they gave him the ball, we would watch the shit out of it. Right? Right? I'd be like, oh, let me... I want to watch this. <laughs> what the hell he's going to do? I just, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. I, I really don't, I don't have, I don't think there's any way they could say, we want to hurt West Coast, we want to make everybody a runner. I don't think that's like an angle to take. I don't think that's it. I think it's Skimbo, it really comes back, like he said, they just don't want to see a, a wide receiver in the backfield. I don't know, man. Yes, you cannot reset in my draft no more. I'm glad you came in. Let, let's talk about that. Fuck my topics that I took all day thinking and writing down. Fuck my topics. Let's talk about my draft. God damn it, Muku. No, for real. Uh, yeah, they definitely got rid of the redraft, which was a good thing. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Um, so I, I just, I honestly, I, um, I feel like, let I, I'll tell you this right now. I don't think I don't think there's somebody that watches Madden and turns it off. Because of they're running too much, they're running bunch too much. I I really just don't think that happens. I just can't think of a human being sitting down and saying, you know, I'm not gonna watch this anymore because they're running bunch, they're running. Because I, yeah, Journey, I don't, I don't have an answer for this. Like, like, why would they change it? I think the whole bunch, bunch first bunch conversation or debate. It's for people that suck at Madden. And that's what they say. Oh, it's just bunch versus bunch. I don't want to play like that. You know, it's bummy. That's all. It's like a sim thing. But I will tell you that no no wide receiver or halfback 
Um, I do think it hurts West Coast uh, the most. And BG is in here. It hurts. Uh, BG is in here. It hurts him as well. You know? Do you think... Do you think people would use... He- Obviously, everybody would use Hester running back. He is the new Dante Hall. The better Dante Hall. I don't think they would use the human joystick thing. It's pretty cool, but I don't think it's worth what the cap they put on it, honestly. But uh, I, I really just don't think there's an answer to what people want to watch when it comes to Madden. I feel like, you know, I don't think the play style of Madden is going to turn people away. I don't think that's... I don't care if people are running the ball a thousand times. I don't care if people are p- passing the ball every play. I don't think there's one specific play style that's going to turn away viewers. I don't think that is. I think the the viewership is about promotion, the product, which honestly, the product has been amazing. The production, the the the, the be easy guy, the broadcasters, the cameras, everything has been awesome. Period. It gets better every single time. You know, I just think it gets to a point now it's about promotion, it's about marketing, it's about getting these people watching these events and i think if they keep the same broadcast this which they will it's going to be the same type of energy the same type of broadcast bigger games and hopefully we get tons of viewerships because right now i'll be honest more people watch good morning madden or whatever the hell it's called than watch the mcs and honestly chat it's really not close it's really not even close right now uh so for me For me, uh, they got to do a better job of marketing these events because they, 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 they've been running them pretty good. For someone that's a stickler on commentary, on, you know, just the camera, the cameras, the, you know, we talked about the Cowboys Club Series, how it was all in their faces, the broadcast, the game sound was too loud, all those things. Uh, EA has done a great job at everything as far as the production is concerned, uh. It's, it's, I'm not lying. Like, like people literally watch... That watch the mutt breakdowns more than they watch the MCS, and it, it's it's. I don't want to say it's depressing. It makes sense, but I mean for me, uh, for me it's just the truth. You know, we have to find a way to engage that market, and that's EA's job. It's not our job. Never feel like it's your job to make something better. Your job is to go out there and play mad. You don't have to be entertaining. Don't ever think that. You know, but. Like, it's their job, you know, and they're the, you're, you're going to get, whoever wins this is going to get paid a hundred thousand dollars, whether there's one viewer or there's a hundred thousand viewers, they're going to get paid the same. So for me, don't ever worry about that. Honestly. Yeah. Farrell's with, I, I, I didn't watch anything to know about Madden. Did you, is that the, uh, the Crawford, what did you watch first about Madden? I didn't watch Madden first at all. Like I played Madden. Like, I didn't even know like Twitch was a thing. I, I for me, my man Kent Kent balling you. I don't know if he's in here, but he was the one that put me on like Twitch. I would sit there in the party playing Madden. He's like, "Yo, there's this guy Stiffmeister on. Let's try to wager him." <laughs> like what the hell? I didn't know about Twitch. I'm like, bro, yo, no, man. I'm just trying to play the game. I didn't know about none of this shit. Like, for real. And Stiff, but Stiff was like lightweight the man. Yeah, I didn't watch, I didn't know Farrells and Gibbs. I didn't know none of that shit. T-Raw was the man too. Yeah, I, I didn't watch, I didn't, bro, I didn't, like, Madden 16, Madden 16 was it. That was, Madden 16 was like, was like the, um, that was like my first steps into Twitch and the YouTube and the, well, I guess I watched YouTube before that. And Justin, Justin TV, the only time I would watch that is when my man Proof would like broadcast a game or something like that. And I don't think I ever really watched t Raw, And it never, it, it never, I don't find joy watching other people play Madden. Maybe because I'm good at it. 
I watch. I, I like watch people play Call of Duty. I like watching people play 2K. I like watching them play Apex and Fortnite because they're just good at it, and I can appreciate how how much better than they are at me at it. But I've really never watched people play Madden OD unless it's like you know two of you good players playing each other. Yeah, that that's Skimbo's theory. It's my theory too, man. Like, it was some popping ass mutt dudes on YouTube, and then like. Because when you were the best man player, like, back then you were just a mutt guy, like top 10 in mutt. And man, 16, good players didn't play mutt, you know, because there was no money on it. But once they put the money on it, the good players played it. So when the good players played mutt, and now they're playing the T-Rolls and the, the Tweezies, who else was like a big met, Rose Bowl that were like these big streamers, right? That people thought were just Jesus at the game. Now, I knew... I, me, me, my bum ass playing mutt head to head. I know, I know because I've been around the man scene to an extent for 10 years, right? Stiff, something like that. It was people, like, these people were, were super good, right? But I knew that I wasn't there. I, I'm, I, I'm not the best in the world because I know these guys are out there, right? So for me, all these people playing, they were the top streamers. Once they start getting popped, I don't know if it made them like they weren't the best anymore. Like, and I'll be real, for me, it's tough to keep doing this if I'm not at these MCS events. I'm not, you know, one of the top ten players in the world. It is, it is like depressing. It's, it's not depressing, but it's demoralizing. It is. It's like, bro, do I want to keep going on with this? You know what I'm saying, do I want to keep? Am I still the best? Will people keep watching me if I'm not the best? That is one of the biggest like fears of a man streamer. Without a, without a doubt, I understand it one million percent. When I didn't play in the MCS last year, I was like, bro, like, my shit is going to be devastated. Like, people are not going to give a shit no more. But you have to realize that people, essentially, they like watching you. Like, playing good at Madden can only take you so far. It can only open the door for a couple people. But, essentially, people need to have a relationship with you as a streamer. And once you learn that, and it's, uh, it's, a, lot re it's a lot more relaxing, honestly. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, there was a lot more streamers that were popping. But like I said, Sniffmeister was probably the first person that like I said, my man Kent was like my man Kent was like, uh Yo, let's let's go wager Sniffmeister. Play under my gamer tag and I'll wager him and we'll take a hundred K from him. Ha 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 ha. Like yo, my man Kent yo, balling you up is a slime ball. Like a slime ball. I'll tell you that right now. But anyway, let's talk about these brackets. And we're going to talk about the 32 people. We're going to talk about the um 32 people that made it. Compared to the 32 last year. Because. Wesley, you know, and Kiv were like, this year is, last year was so much better. Now, I want to start this debate. I want to start this topic. You guys are here. I need your help, right? Um, what I was going to say, I had this great fucking point I was just about to say. Now, nah, because Wesley, you made the podcast because you made this, because I would tell you, Wesley is just the errand boy. He really is the errand boy. Like we have like Trey, like Taylor gang, like he, you, yo, Taylor Gang is like our Wesley. We just make him do shit that nobody else want to do. You know what I'm saying? So we're like, Wesley, go complain about the brackets. They said, well, the bracket was so much better last year than it is this year. Now, like I said, okay, I want to start this by saying now, there are a lot of things that bring the skill gap of this game down a lot. It does. Because the run is powerful. It is high power, period. Two, we're playing salary cap, where... where it's harder to stop one of them super running backs because you don't you're not gonna have great players all over defense. You're not gonna have two or three players that can do anything on defense. It is harder to stop the run on this mode. It is hard to stop the run on this game. Because the running backs are OD, the pursuit sucks, all this thing. The run is good on this game. If you couple the run being good on this game with how short the games are, okay, the run is good. The game is short. Also, what did I say earlier about the game between Colin and Joke? You have no risk running the ball. So not only is the run good, right? The game is short, and you have zero risk in running the football. You will not 
turn the ball over, running the football. So you're going to be in every game. So essentially, for me, it is a smaller skill gap. But at the same time, when Wesley and Kiv and Henry and Mo, when these guys did good at the Classic, we didn't talk about the bracket at the Classic. That bracket was fine. Right? But now when we come to this bracket and they all kind of got popped and they're all out of the tournament, now the bracket's kind of weak and the game sucks. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I want to talk about these brackets. Let's talk about them. Because I thought this was a... my. My squad is out. Let me just... We're going to blame the game. That's how... That's how I felt about it. You know what I'm saying? Now, we're going to talk about... This is the new bracket, right? Or this is this year's... Where's my OBL set? All right, here we go. Now, this is like the shittiest thing in the world. Um... Yeah, it's just like, okay, my squad got popped. Now, I will tell you this right now. Kiv and them, they they did, they did pretty much dominated the Classic, right? They Between Kiv and Henry and, and Mo, they were the, the best players at the Classic, really. I thought, like I said, Joke was good. Uh, I'm trying to think Classic that I thought was good. I thought Joke was really good. But Henry, Mo, and Kiv... Uh, they were like the best, best, best players. They dominated the classic. Now I'll tell you this: EMB is 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 really kicking the shit out of the, the club series right now. Honestly, yeah, J, J Miller, Mac, they, people just random. But listen, we didn't hear about the bracket. Uh, God damn. We didn't hear about the bracket, anything like that during the classic. Now then, it was all good. But I I do think the game I do think the game really tends to the game is really. The game is shorter. It's it's one and done at this point, and uh, for me, I, it does it does lend itself to a lot of it does lend itself to a lot of upsets, you know. And then when we say upsets, like who do we think was upset by a shitter? That's why I asked you guys to chat. Uh, who do you think was upset by a shitter? That's my question to you guys. Like, honestly. Matster, Matt, okay, because Matster's not a shitter. Uh, I, I seriously. Clef, Clef, I, nah, see, I'm not going to call Clef, I'm not going to call Duke is not a shitter. And Duke got, and, and Duke got spotted a free seven. I don't think he got cheated and I don't think he lost to a shitter. You know? That's how I'm feeling, like, Yeah, but the game is short, so you're gonna get upset. So when I look at this, is like we we compare it. Like what what are we comparing in the brackets? You know, as we see Thunderball, I talked about him. Thunderball looked good to me. Free the Penguins. I didn't really watch any of these games. I feel like they were on the backstage, and we didn't watch the Bengals. Deliverance. Deliverance is a slobber knocker expert. One million percent. He gets shit done. I'm not gonna say like. It's the way the game plays. It's the way the game is shorter. And like I said, there is no risk to running the football. I just said all that. You know, it's going to happen. You know, you have to be on your P's and Q's. And you have to play 100. You have to play your best game at the right time. You know, you have to 1,000% play your best game at, at the right time. You know, there is no second chance. There is no turnaround. The game is short. And, and when you're passing the ball, you you and you turn the ball over. Like we saw Colin, like, bro, you're, you're not going to win games. Pretty. Um, thumbs. I mean, I don't think, I don't think thumbs upset him. I don't think thumbs got lucky. I think he just, he beat the first guy. I forget who the first guy was. And then master, we, we watched that game on the podcast. Like, you know, Stevie J, Stevie J, because you guys know his name is not, is not upset. AKG. I don't think he upset nobody. And we go here with Mills, Drenny. Like these are good players. Kratobin is a belt winner. Little man, like what? Like Tony, I mean, he didn't win. Fame Nate won, but uh, he played the game like anybody else. He ran the ball, played smart, and just got some turnovers. That's that's the game. Tony was risking shit. He was passing the ball. Fame Nate ran the ball. He didn't risk anything. Man elite. Uh, shoot. Y'all been telling me this guy Man elite is pretty good. 
I'm sorry. This is the only game Mills. So, Wesley, just say Mills is a shitter. That's all you guys say. I mean, I mean, Mills has been good in other matches. Though. Mills has been good, man. Like he's been a good player. And Wesley, like as my saying, like you, <laughs> you didn't win the game. You lost. You lost. You know what I'm saying, man, elite. I've been telling me he's pretty good. You know what I'm saying, and he, he played good. Ivan, Jeff, these guys are back-to-back -back club series winners at least. And we go over here to the other side. Scheming, who's been playing for a long time. Radiant, who's been practicing for a month. Shit. Phenom, who uh, Phenom, Phenom's probably in in the. Players that look the best, Phenom was probably in the top ten of this. Really, he looked really good. I'm saying then we got BG, BG fam. And I can't lie to that. We got Evil Low, who's won Giants back to back. Like, user God. I mean, he didn't win that. My man, who was the guy? Oh, we weapons or thumbs won that. I'm saying my point is, and we go back to this bracket, this uh, this graphic right here, boy. This is just pure. Look at this one. We got Ice, Bazooka, Kwani, Borderline Bazooka, Nick, Bazooka, my man, uh, some Serious, Spoto, Jeff Allen, War Daddy, I Love God. Like, I'm telling you, man, it's definitely some, some things, some people... That sneak in like that's mad. People are gonna have upsets. People are gonna have this, that, and the third. People are gonna have. There's gonna be people that sneak in. Now this looks strong over here. I can't lie, the NFC look real strong over here. You know what I'm saying Dre Strafing came McKinley status, Nene T D. I mean, yeah, the NFC looks way tougher this year than it did last year. But at the same time, I mean, the NFC looks way tougher this year or last year. At the same time, man. I mean, we got D. Croft. We got Volt. We got, you know I'm saying, we got Trey Kings, Beast Mode. Man, I think that's strong. I think the West is strong. I think the South is pretty strong. I thought Civil looked really good. Bugs, Nick Hackle looked pretty good. Now, that's why I asked you guys. I just think, this is how I feel, Wesley. This is how I feel. It go, it, this is how I feel. Let me tell you something. The biggest thing I never want to do is be a salty fucking person. Now, you can be salty. Because we're all salty as hell. I'm salty as hell when I lose. You're salty as hell when, when you lose. That's period. People be salty. That's life. But I don't want to, like, bring down from other people because I'm salty. To me, that's, that's corny. Last year's bracket was better than this year's when you're out of the bracket. I feel like this. If you're out of the bracket, let the bracket be in peace. I just feel like that was some salty shit to do. That's all. That's my biggest thought about bringing up, oh, this year's bracket shitty compared to the last one. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. Because, listen, I be sick of shit watching other people play when I got popped. I, look, my level of salt be through the roof. Through the roof. But I can't let you guys know I'm that salty. I listen, I said the game sucks. You know, I got cheated, blah, blah, blah. But no matter what I think about the game, I'm never going to take away from somebody that's doing better than me. Because that just make you look salty. The worst thing you can look is salty. You got to be salty with a smile on your face. Hide that salt. Jealousy is a weak emotion, man. You got to overcome that. You know what I'm saying? Last year's bracket better. I, and the game was shorter. Or the game was longer. Game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how I feel. Dilute the salt, Dev. You feel me, Dev? You got to dilute the salt. You can't show people the salt. That's all. Yeah. Wesley, it went down. Tweet was not meant to take. Yes, it was. This bracket sucks compared to last year's. It's 1,000% to demean the people. Then what else is it for? Oh, this game sucks because this guy made it. That's literally the whole point of the tweet. The game sucks because this guy made it. And you're pointing at these guys. This is, like, I'm pointing at you guys. The game sucks because you made it. That was the whole point of the tweet. I, you can't argue that.
Which, I mean, at the end of the day, I'd be feeling the same fucking way. I'd be mad as shit. As some of these dudes watch, I'd be feeling the same way. You have no problem. This, like, listen, I feel the same way. I watch these kids play and I think I'm so much fucking better than them. The game sucks that they're there. I feel that way. But to say that and publicly put it out there is corny. That's all I'm saying. That's all That's all I'm saying. Okay, you're not salty about... Listen, I, I, I'm salty. Me, I am salty. As a competitive man player, I am salty that I'm not there. First, I want to tell you that. I don't give a fuck if the game is shoots and ladders. If I'm competitive in it, I want to be there. I don't care if I got cheated or not. And I'm going to be salty if I'm not there. One the thing about me is I can accept my salt and support the other people. You know what I'm saying? I can accept my salt and not, you know, say, yeah, ha, ha, look, the game sucks because this guy made it. That's all I'm saying. It's just corny. Because y'all don't understand. I'm the saltiest person in the world. I think anybody that's real competitive be salty. Yeah. By the way, let's talk about this. I was just saying, we ain't going to talk about this no more because it is what it is. But I want to talk talk to you guys about who do we think is the strongest division. I'm going to look at these and I'll tell you mine. Because you guys kind of know. I, I think I got, I already went through one already. I see fancy. I feel about the same. I feel about the same way. AFC South is really strong. Mills and Journey, Kratobin and Little Man, that's strong. I think, oh man. I think we gotta think. Um, like you said, NFC West is strong. With Beast Mode, Beast Mode by far looked the best. Beast Mode by far had the easiest time winning his club. The easiest. NFC South is cool. I'm I'm interested to see how you are gonna play offense without the without the um nasty streak. Um uh, boom. I like my chat. I like the chat here. Uh, but you guys can see YouTube, you guys can see young Tony Elite. I mean, this one's not bad. I with Tony here. Tony got second life. I'll tell you something. You, if you get second life, second life, just like my man user God, I mean He's not the player that Tony is, but who who the hell knows? Like I said, you can't underestimate none of these dudes because people are playing the shit out of the game, right? So, but to get second life is like, all right, I'm back. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you're with a girl and she breaks up with you, right? Like, all right, let's put it like this. If you're with a girl, right, and you when you first, like, first couple months, you're doing whatever the hell you want. But if you get caught up and she takes you back, then you play a little bit harder, right, Chad? You play a little bit harder, like... Bang. Y'all play a little bit harder now. I'm going to lock in a little bit more. And I feel like that's how Tony and, and, and user guard got to be. You know what I'm saying? Is NFC North the worst? I would say... I don't know. I, Phenom look good. Radiant look good. BG look... I, all these dudes look good. I, I mean... If you could put me in any spot... Like if I if I if I could take somebody's place, right? Like W, you, we're, we're gonna give you a chance, Chad. Now you guys, you guys tell me this: we're gonna give you a chance to compete for a hundred thousand dollars. You can take one person's spot. Who would you guys pick? Who would you guys pick that think is the easiest road to go on? The Browns, Deliverance, and then Penguins. You want Penguins? Yeah, I would pick Henry. I would pick Henry. Joke and Deli Joke, yeah. Yeah, I I would play. I I just feel like I'd beat the shit out of Deliverance. I don't know, <laughs> but I feel like. But then he get on the field and he just balls, man. It's the scariest shit ever. I don't know how the hell he bro. He just balls every time. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know, but I, I would probably pick Henry. I don't know. I do think I do think that the Skimbles, the, the division, I think this is pretty good because Stevie J and AKG is going to be a slobber knocker. And Thumbs, I mean, Thumbs is Thumbs. I mean, he put them two Thumbs up that master shit. It's the short games, can it? ain't just single elimination, bro. It's been single elimination forever. I do feel like they should have kept the double elimination up until uh, the up until now. I, I do think that. I, I, what's the point of doing it? I don't. I don't understand. Like, what's the point of doing it halfway through? You know, if you're not gonna do it, I've never been. A, I've never been somebody that said it should be done. But I feel like it should have went all the way up until this guy, until somebody won the club. The double elimination part. Because for do it just for the online. Yeah, we're definitely going to do a bracket challenge next week. We're not sure of all these matchups. But next week, we will announce the bracket challenge and who wins that. You know what I'm saying? You know. Now, I, yeah, I've never minded single elimination. I've never, ever minded that. Um, I do mind the short ass game though. I don't like that at all. I agree. The the short ass game is killing. I don't know why, and I feel like it's an easy thing to fix. I think they should they should fix that, but they're not going to. That's going to be the game this year. Um, that's going to be the game this year, honestly. But like I said we will do a bracket challenge next week, man. Once we figure out all these, because like it depends on what team finished in the division. We're going to figure out all, and that's kind of tough. Uh, you got to prepare. Some people have to prepare for two or three people. I mean, other teams, like, Henry don't know who he's going to play. He doesn't know he's going to finish first or second in the division. They have no idea. My man, but Jones, gifting the subs, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. My guy. That's a real one. But like I was going to say, um, nobody really knows. So, uh, it is it is definitely going to be tough for those guys uh, competing. And then they only have, what, a week to turn in their lineup, which is... Uh, this is how I feel about time to turn the lineup, time to make changes. Um, when this, as long as everybody's the same, I don't care if it's ten minutes. You know, I I I, I don't care if it's if ten weeks, ten minutes. If everybody has the same date, then I think it's cool. I, I really don't think it's, I think it's cool. So my man Buster in the chat, man, what's up? Um, boom boom. Lineups due tomorrow. So whatever, as long as you guys have the same, or as long as you guys have the same, um, the same time, I feel like it's cool. Agree, disagree, chat. But anyway, I'm excited. We will do a bracket challenge next week. Uh, like I said, I'm working on some sponsors to try to get, get a lot of money. If not, I'll put up the money, uh, try to get it popping. Uh, for you guys to fill out the bracket. Um, last year, everybody just did it on their own. It was their phone, and they, like, filled in the bracket. I wish there was easier ways to do it. But um, we'll figure it out. No, we're not going to do any buy-in. It's going to be free 99 to the bracket challenge. Free 99. I don't care if you're on YouTube. I don't care if you're on Twitch. I don't care if you're on SoundCloud. I don't care if you're on Twitter. Wherever you are. Is free to get into this. Um, but I will tell you, you guys will police your own brackets. Um, and there'll be there'll be a cutoff date and you'll police your own bracket and tell me which one you had, you know what I'm saying. I can I don't think anything should be live except maybe the finals of the tournament of each club. Just one PlayStation, one Xbox guy, and I don't think they should stop double elimination until the end until somebody wins xbox or somebody wins playstation that's all but ultimately for me it's the just the length of the game is the toughest thing that makes it tough that's all just the length of the game if they fix the, the madden has been fine all the, the best players have been the best players for four years now i'm saying and honestly they're probably one of these players that you know the jokes the skimbos the drinnies I'm saying one of these guys is probably going to make a run in this tournament because they're just that good that's i mean this is like let's just if you lost, I, I got popped. Like, I just, it is what it is. You know, I mean, and it's my fault. You know, I got, it's not like the game, was, I didn't lose because the game was too short. I could have fought in the games that I had if the game was longer, but, you know. 
Buster, don't come in here with the Bugatti bug stuff, bro. I come on, man. All right, I gotta end the podcast. I heard somebody said Bugatti Bugs doesn't have any respect. Buster, come on, bro. Come on, bro. I I love single limit. I I don't know. I, that's how I feel about it. I wouldn't have won a tournament if it wasn't single elimination. That's how I feel. I played some of the best games of my life when I needed to play the best games of my life. I, that's how I feel, you know. And those guys didn't. You know what I mean? Like like that's their fault. And I feel like single elimination makes you have to... What's that little emote they see the guy sitting up in his chair? That's single elimination. Drop your fucking nuts and let's go. There's no coming back. There's no rematch. There's no whoopsie, I messed up, let's do it again. Nah, man. This is it. Nah, I just... I just don't... I, that's how I feel. Yeah, more sweaty. That's how I feel. I'm a single elimination guy. I don't mind double. I'm, it's not like I'm not going to. I'm not going to war over that debate. I'm not. I'm not. It's like if whatever it is, I'm cool with either way. But I don't think it's that big a deal. Oh yeah, I mean that's. That, I just. I'm saying that's how, that's how I feel. You know, I just. I think it's the I, I do th- I do think the short game is bad. I, I legitimately think it's bad. I think it's I now we said that about Rags. Rags has had the forty second play clock. Rags has had this the Rags has had a forty second play clock for the longest and it just for me, um it's always been bad. Bad, bad, bad for that. And I don't know why they went on. I, I I just I just like the thirty second five minutes was always as always good enough. I I can never. I can't ever remember a game that I lost because the game was too short. Now I will tell you I lost to Bobby V and I lost to Gene, both guys who I think would I would beat nine times out of ten. That's how I feel, right? And I feel like I could have fought better in those games from making mistakes and being behind. Yes, but ultimately I lost because of me. It doesn't wasn't because the game was shorter. You know, and I don't think I don't think there's been a time, even this year. This year is probably times where people see the games too short. That's why I lost. But at the, at the same time, in my, before this year, when it was 30 second play clock and five minutes, I don't think the length of a game has ever been a problem. I think that's the perfect time for a game. Postman Joe asks, "What's my matchup I want to see the most? Joke versus Skimbo. That's that's what I want to see. Uh, who else? I want to see Bugs versus User. I think that's going to be fun." Uh, I want to see Drenny versus Mills. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see Drenny play everybody. I want to see Joke play everybody. I want to see. I want to play. I want to see Joke play Drenny. Skimbo play Drenny. I want. I just love seeing those guys play. Play man, honestly. No, no, Skimbo. Let me tell you something about Skimbo. Skimbo gets worse the more you play him. He he knows that. Especially me. Like no, he gets worse. First game, no chance. You first game, if someone beats Skimbo in the first game, like they, I feel just feel like they got lucky, honestly. D. Craw versus Henry, yeah, for sure. Skimbo's a pop up. You haven't seen me. Skimbo's yo, he Skimbo's like the guy that lurks on the corner and hides. That's what it is. he just pops up. You haven't seen me play. Boom, lost by forty. That's what I'm saying. Bro, BG fan versus Deliverance would be a slobber. Yo, forgive you. You late, but I'm telling you, Deliverance is the king of slobber knockers. He is the slobber knocker king. There is no listen. Deliverance from the jungle, bro. I swear to God, he's the slobber knocker king. The slobber knocker king. Nobody's built. Nobody's more. Listen, sweatshop Deliverance, bro. We need to get Deliverance on All Star team up, bro. He. We need to get him on All Star team up. He got to know how to play 2K. Like, come on. He, he's going to add something to some team out there. For real. That's all. But anyway, this was um episode 59, man. You guys, listen. Bracket Challenge is next week, episode, episode 60. Bracket Challenge, man. I can't. I'm going to have fun filling out my bracket on the stream. Uh, I might have the bugs, man, popping up. I might have the bugs man popping. Might have the bugs man popping. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, this was 59. 
Um, I said hit the like, but book. Listen, Moody, I'm trying to tell you, Bugs. Clef in the lineup, all star team up. Jesus. By the way, this was the new podcast, episode 59, man.